Okay, this is how European settlement happened in the Chesapeake region, part two. And now that we've established that England was the colonial master of the seas, it's time to start taking a look at exactly the colonies that they started to set up. One point of interest about all this is the formation of what became known as the English Joint Stock Companies. Now, this is something that we still use in the modern day. It was the forerunner of the modern corporation. Back then, just like now, it enabled investors to pool their resources and their capital together to start a business, in this case, a colonization company. Now, there were plenty of reasons to think that English joint stock companies would be a success. There was already enough labor and plenty of motivation that already existed. England's population had grown to 4 million by 1600, and they didn't have enough work to go around for everyone in that population, so a lot of people didn't have jobs. There was also an economic depression around this time by 1600, and that didn't help things either. Uh, primo primogeniture laws said that only the eldest sons were able to inherit estates, so that meant that ambitious younger sons would have to find their fortunes elsewhere. The bottom line, there was plenty of labor and plenty of motivation to make the joint stock companies of England a success. The first of the major joint stock companies was the Virginia Company. Now, the Virginia Company, like all joint stock companies, had pooled their investment resources together to fund an, ex an exploration of the New World. The purpose was to find gold and find it soon. Otherwise, the threat was that the colonists would be left in the New World if they couldn't bring any gold back. Apparently, this was kind of like the whole Cortez burning his ships thing. I guess they were trying to motivate the settlers to find the gold. And the settlers were plenty of motivated to do so on their own already, so they went to work trying to find gold. But that wasn't without difficulty. When they landed at Jamestown, they were immediately attacked by Native Americans. And instead of trying to find ways to sustain themselves, uh, they were looking for gold all the time. They really needed to kind of scrap that idea and get to building uh, shelters and getting fire and getting water and getting food, you know, the basic elements of survival. But the only thing they were concerned about when they got there was finding gold. They had the threat of the Virginia Company hanging over their head. Find gold or get left there. And here's something to consider, too. You know, I had mentioned in the previous slide that they landed at Jamestown, but there was no Jamestown to land at yet. They simply landed at the site that would eventually become Jamestown. They were going to have to get to work before they were looking for too much more gold. So they basically set out to uh, build the colony in 1607, right after they landed, uh, setting up the walls and things along those lines. And even then, there were people who weren't willing to help build this fortress to protect themselves because they were off looking for gold all the time. Now, the colony itself, once the walls went up, was easy to defend. You had the water on one side so you could see any attacks coming, and you could shoot at people in the water itself. Plus, you had the walls on all sides. So it wasn't that Jamestown was difficult to uh, defend in any particular way. Uh, but the problem was that it was located near a swampy area, so it was very mosquito-infested and completely unsanitary. As a result, there were mass deaths by disease, malnutrition, and starvation, primarily because the people who had built the colony, uh, very few of them knew how to hunt or fish. All they really wanted to do was look for gold. A lot. But eventually, they'd get it together and the colony would grow. As you can see here on the picture, here is the original fort that existed when Jamestown was first established. And if you look over here, a village and a town that spread all the way out into this area was built up around that fort. So eventually they figured it out. And eventually, unlike Roanoke, this colony would not be lost to mysterious disappearance. Now, the man personally responsible for Jamestown surviving these early problems was this guy, John Smith. Although John Smith didn't really look like that or have Mel Gibson's voice like he does in the movie. Uh, this was John Smith right here. Smith became the leader of Jamestown in 1608, one year after it was settled, 
and uh, immediately found the uh, unsanitary conditions and uh, the mass deaths and decided that people needed to do something about this instead of just looking for gold all the time, regardless of what the threats were from the Virginia company. So he made a proclamation as the leader of Jamestown. He who shall not work shall not eat. Uh, anybody who wasn't willing to help build up the settlement and uh, start uh, establishing the strength of the colony there, they weren't going to get fed, and Smith didn't care. You either work or you don't eat. And that motivated the settlers pretty extensively. There would be no more looking for gold for a while. And in the meantime, John Smith was involved in a hot and heavy romance with Pocahontas. Okay, uh, enough of the Disney version of history here. Uh, that's not actually true, much like the history that's presented in many Disney movies. Uh, John Smith was actually in his late 30s, and Pocahontas was in her young teens when they met, and they never had a romance of any sort. None of that is true. What was true, though, is that uh, John Smith was kidnapped in December 1607, uh, shortly after the formation of Jamestown and shortly after he had gotten there. He was subjected to a mock execution by Powhatan, the chief of the local tribe there, who was threatened by the settlement of the English in the region. Pocahontas, quote-unquote, saved Smith, symbolically. Now, Powhatan had no intention of killing Smith, and it was very theatrical. Pocahontas basically got between her father and John Smith to save his life, uh, but everybody knew what it really was. Powhatan wasn't really going to kill Smith, but the uh, gesture was intended to impress upon Smith that uh, uh, the Powhatans had power, and they also had a desire for peaceful relations. And if the English settlers didn't agree to that, then the Powhatans could bring war if they wanted. So John Smith had survived the attempt on his life, so to speak, by Powhatan, and started to establish a relatively peaceful relationship with the Powhatan tribe in the region. Uh, he had also made his proclamation about he who shall not work shall not eat. And you would think that between those two things, it would get better pretty much right away, but not quite yet. One of the most famous parts of the history of Jamestown, and frankly American history, was the starving time that took place in Jamestown during the winter of 1609 to 1610. Now, John Smith had become the leader in 1608, and people started to doubt his rule a little bit during this time uh, because during that winter, things weren't going very well. Uh, people had nothing to eat, and so they started eating dogs, cats, rats, and in some cases, corpses. Uh, one man was put on trial for killing and attempting to salt his wife, uh, killing her and... and um, uh, basically resorting to cannibalism, trying to salt the meat so it would last until the spring. Out of 400 people, only 60 would survive that winter, once again known as the starving time of 1609 to 1610. The 60 who did survive attempted to go back to England in the spring of 1610, ready to keep completely give up on the colony. But before the 60 survivors of the starving time could get on ships in the spring of 1610 and go back to England, they were stopped by the newly arrived Lord Delaware, who the modern-day state of Delaware is named after. Delaware was pretty upset that people were attempting to leave and give up on the colony, so he ordered the settlers back under the threat of jail or even execution. He enacted military rule almost immediately and also began attacking the Powhatan tribe as soon as he possibly could. Smith completely disagreed with these policies, but now that Delaware was the leader, he dismissed John Smith from the colony, and Smith left to go explore what is now the modern state of Maine. With Smith gone, Delaware was the one ruling the Jamestown colony and doing so in a very harsh fashion. Uh, as mentioned before, he started attacking the Powhatan tribes and other Native American tribes in the region. Uh, as a result, there were three major wars known as the Anglo, because English is Anglo, the Anglo-Powhatan Wars. The first one took place in 1614, and the settlers would win this one as they would win the other three. What was significant about the Powhatan War of 1614 
is that Pocahontas, uh, grown up a little bit more, would marry an English settler named John Rolfe. It is John Rolfe who would start the tobacco planting in Jamestown and essentially be given credit for saving the colony. The next Anglo-Powhatan War was in 1622, and as mentioned before, the settlers won this one as well. They won all three of them. But 347 settlers ended up dead as a result of the Anglo-Powhatan War of 1622, including Pocahontas' husband, John Rolfe. Pocahontas herself would eventually end up going to England to meet the Queen and be uh, received as a celebrity in England for all the stories that had been told about her. Uh, unfortunately, Pocahontas herself, on the return voyage back to the colonies, would die of disease on the ship. Now, the first two Anglo-Powhatan Wars would only be eight years apart, 1614 and 1622. After the second Anglo-Powhatan War, it would be another 22 years uh, before uh, another one would arise in 1644. The settlers, once again, would win this one, and as a result, and this is significant, the first reservation in the New World was set up. They essentially set up a guarded territory and told Native Americans that they could live there and not approach Jamestown again. In essence, the first reservation that ever existed in the New World, at least in North America. Disease would eventually finish off the Powhatan tribes by 1685, and it was the first example of uh, white settlement drastically affecting Native American culture. Now, as you can see here on the map, Virginia was not the only place where settlement was happening in the Chesapeake region. Maryland was also another place set up, uh, founded by this guy, Lord Baltimore, which, of course, is the uh, guy that the city is named after. Uh, now, Maryland was founded in 1635 as a safe haven for Catholics, remember the vast majority of people who had been coming to the New World had been Protestant uh, as a result of Elizabeth being Protestant, the English being Protestant, and defeating the Spanish uh, Catholic uh, government and their armada, the Spanish Empire. So uh, everybody that was coming to the New World was Protestant, but there were plenty of Catholics who left Europe and wanted to live here too. They were discriminated pretty much everywhere they went, and so Maryland was set up as a safe haven for Catholics. Now, in Maryland, unlike any other place in the colonies, uh, huge estates were given to the Catholics, and Protestants in Maryland were getting just the small backcountry plots of land and trying to farm on these little things. Now, everywhere else in the New World, Protestants were the ones that were being given huge estates, and the Catholics were the ones that were having to make do, if they came over at all, but not Maryland. In Maryland, it was the Catholics that were prospering on the huge estates. The, the Protestants got essentially nothing. Despite the tensions that existed between the Catholics and the Protestants in Maryland, uh, the colony was very prosperous, primarily due to tobacco farming and indentured servants that would come over to work the land. More on those two things when we study economics in Unit 2. But despite the prosperity that Maryland was enjoying, there were still those old tensions for, between the Catholics, who were the majority of the population in Maryland, and the Protestants, who were by far the minority of the population in Maryland. Eventually, more Protestants started to move in, and this became a threat to the Catholics who had essentially run Maryland for years and years. So, uh, 14 years after the founding of Maryland, they had to figure out a way to uh, make sure the Protestants and the Catholics got along. Now this was called the Act of Toleration. The Act of Toleration, again established in 1649, 14 years after Maryland was founded by Lord Baltimore, was an attempt to keep the Protestants in the region happy as more and more of them were moving in. What it basically said was that all Christian religions were accepted in Maryland. That meant that Protestants and Catholics could live there just fine. Nobody would be discriminated against and Everybody could get along. However, the act of toleration, ironically enough, called for the death penalty for Jews, atheists, and anyone who didn't believe in Jesus. So, in terms of an act of toleration, well, it was really only tolerant to other Christians. Not very tolerant to anybody else. 
Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks again for listening.